Hi, welcome back to another Pharmacy Republic video. Today we're going to start our series of five minute shorts where we go over topics in pharmacy and medicine in under five minutes. Today we're going to start with atherosclerosis. So let's start the clock. Atherosclerosis is composed of two words, athero and sclerosis. Athero refers to the porridge like consistency of the fatty deposits, sclerosis refers to the hardening or stiffening of the arterial walls. This stiffening or hardening can increase the blood pressure leading to hypertension. These fatty deposits form on the endothelium, the inner lining of the arterial wall. White blood cells are attracted to these deposits. They send out cytokines to further recruit more white blood cells and we get a chronic inflammatory state with the formation of these fibrous plaques. Okay, so fibrin also joins the party. Now, these plaques can narrow the vessel, causing stenosis, reducing blood flow, causing angina. Let's look at this blood flow in more detail. When the plaque is stable, we have a thrombus. It's not going anywhere. When the plaque ruptures, we form an embolus. Now, this embolus is on the move, and then it can actually block the vessels, causing ischemia. Consequences of ischemia include angina, myocardial infarction, transient ischemic attacks, strokes, peripheral vascular disease, acute coronary syndrome, chronic mesenteric ischemia. Risk factors, non-modifiable. We have, these are things we cannot do anything about. Older age, family history, and being a male. Risk factors, which we can have some influence over. Smoking, alcohol, poor diet, lack of exercise, obesity, poor sleep, and stress. Comorbidities we should be aware of, diabetes, hypertension, chronic kidney disease, inflammatory conditions such as rheumatoid arthritis, because remember, in essence, it's a chronic inflammatory state and atypical antipsychotics. Okay, prevention, uh, two forms, primary and secondary. Primary prevention refers to those people who do not have any pre-existing cardiovascular disease. We, get, uh, we perform a Q-risk three score if it comes back at more than 10%, then we prescribe a torvastatin 20 milligram once at night. NICE guidelines also recommend that we prescribe a torvastatin 20 milligram once at night for those cohort of patients who suffer from chronic kidney disease and type 1 diabetes for more than 10 years. When we initiate a torvastatin 20 milligram, we do blood tests at 3 months and 12 months to check the LFTs because we can find that statins temporarily increase the ALT and AST levels. We should only be worried and stop the statins when these levels rise to more than three times the upper limit of normal. How do the statins work? We're talking about statin, it decreases the level of LDL. Remember, LDL, main component of this fatty uh, atheroma. So we reduce the LDL levels. And other pleiotropic effects of the statins include reducing the inflammation and it actually stabilizes the plaque. Let's look at the secondary prevention. So we're going to give four classes of drugs, ACE inhibitors, beta blockers, aspirin and statins. So ACE inhibitors, contraindications, those suffering from renal impairment, Afro-Caribbeans, because they have low circulating level, uh, levels of renin, beta blockers, we're not going to give it to someone suffering from bradycardia, second or third degree heart block or sick sinus syndrome. We can give it to people who suffer with COPD and asthma. We can then give the cardio selective beta blockers. The Aspirin, we're going to give it in addition to other antiplatelet drugs and the statins we're going to give a torvastatin 80 milligram, a whopping dose. Because we're giving that whopping dose, let's talk about the side effects. Side effects of statins, we've covered this in another uh, video, statins and coenzyme Q10. Myopathy, the main one, and we can measure creatinine kinase to get an, an objective measure if anything of this nature is happening. Obviously, we're going to question the patient as well. It can cause hyper, uh, hyperglycemia, can lead to type 2 diabetes. And another very, very rare side effect, if, we lower, if we're too aggressive in lowering the LDL levels, we can trigger a hemorrhagic stroke. But again, that's very, very rare. So that's your five minutes of atherosclerosis. I think we've done it in under five minutes. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe. And if you have any questions or suggestions, then please, uh, please leave a note in the comment. Uh, thanks for watching.